Live from Hickory, it's Tuesday night, May the 23rd, and you're about to watch an all new, totally live, country-ish podcast show. How do you know it's live, maybe you're asking. I've got today's newspaper, the Hickory Daily Record, and I circled the date and I highlighted it. That is proof of live, <laughs> see? Crawl dads are back. We got the GOP legislation attack. That's today's paper. Real quick, let me tell you about um, Sundrop. It's the best citrus soda in the solar system that happens to be from the south. It's all behind me here. We love Sundrop. We drink it all the time. Sometimes we mix it with uh, alcohol and make adult beverages. What do we have today, Isaiah? So I took 99 bananas. I didn't actually like grab 99 bananas and put it in a glass <laughs> i didn't think you did the 99 banana liquor and put some sun drop on top of that and it's called banana sun banana sun would you look at that all righty i say we start the show what say you boys yeah <laughs> let's do it the alan jackson just a country boy and he's making it good He was y'all's underdog Dressed in big overalls Living next to the woods Likes to eat sushi But he don't even fish Not so much a country boy It's more like he's country-ish Self a podcast he knows it'll last cause he's in Hickory. Uh-huh. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Reap. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's me. All right, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to episode 182 of Country Ish. And today's show, it's like an angry video game where all the walking dead are wearing (laughs) tracksuits. What's that mean? I'll tell you. From the TV show, The Walking Dead. Ever heard of it? And the Disney series, Hawkeye. We got actor, comedian, radio host, Carlos Navarro on the show tonight. And let me tell you, you're going to absolutely love this guy. Plus... Me and my young Hacy Gen Z over here, intern Isaiah, we played video games against each other. What game did we play? Who was better? And my pal Mark Hunt is here, so we're going to play another uh, edition of Goodwill Hunting as we unbox gifts. We got each other at a Goodwill. Plus, residual checks, baby. I got more of them. Call in later for your chance to win my money. But first, I am live. Right now on Facebook, YouTube, maybe Twitch, maybe Twitter. You never know with these things. But leave me a comment. Talk to me real time. I want to hear from you. Okay? I got interns over here checking your comments and fact checking me. So let me ask you a question Did you watch The Walking Dead? Who was your favorite character? Leave it in the comment section. We'll try to get to it here in a little bit. Let me introduce you to the gang tonight. Sitting over here, I got. A hero, honestly. Um, I like to call him Sergeant Mark, having eight balls deep. How you doing, buddy? Morning, doing good. How about yourself? I'm good, thank you. And next to him is the young intern, Isaiah. And walking around over here, we've got, oh wow, very famous, well, famous adjacent. His brother is famous. This is Marcus Stamos. That's John Stamos' little brother. How you doing? Doing good. How you doing? <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Um, how was your weekend, boys? I mean, I feel like today's episode, I kind of know a little bit about your weekends, but let's tell everybody else. I think we start with Sergeant Ball, if you don't mind. No, I, I think his is, he had a more exciting weekend than I did, yeah. Well, both of you did. Yeah. Fisticuffs. That's right. Fisticuffs happened. Ball, you go first. What happened this weekend? What did you do? Well, first off, it was a long weekend. NASCAR made their uh, debut or 
reintroduction to North Wilkesboro Speedway. That's right. So that's after 27 years of being dormant. So other than a few little small hot pocket stuff, this is the first big one. Real quick, was Ern- was Junior there? Junior was there. Yeah. Jeff Gordon was in the pace car. Everham started the race. Nice. And, uh, it, I bet that was, place was packed. It, it was packed. Weather was great. But the uh, the weekend was a little bit split up for me. I had a show Saturday uh, with the Malpass brothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did some stuff with my dad for that. Okay. And uh, so we cash, uh, casually kind of got into the uh, – uh, speedway because with his health and everything right but we had three generations myself my son and obviously my dad and uh well the race was boring um <laughs> so to to put it in perspective um your sponsor yeah hendrick honda hickory everybody well hendrick his driver kyle larson Mm-hmm. won the all-star race hands down hardly any competition good for him every time he, he would get restarted and stuff he would just pull away from him yeah. so one caution uh, for an accident the other caution was for uh, uh mandatory okay um but they did throw a caution flag in the stands because of a fight that broke out this is what i wanted to hear uh, i saw before you even brought this to my attention i saw a video of this fight that happened in the stands in north wilkesboro and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I'll talk about that on the podcast. And then I tried to, and then you, you and Elliot and Isaiah had sent it to me like, oh, we have to talk about this. And I tried to find the video. I can't find the video. Yeah, he took it down. I tried to reach out to him, and uh, he's got his messages turned off. So I was going to, he, he races. You mean the guy who recorded it? Who recorded it. Yeah. And so he races here in Hickory. He lives in another spot. Um, but I couldn't get a message to him because I was going to try and get the video to kind of go along with the actual article. You So you were there, and you saw this fight go down. Uh, not only saw it, I I got a habit of stepping into it. Yeah. Ball likes to uh, stop, prevent rapes, fights, burglars, all kinds of stuff. He's a hero. He's well, a hero. They, uh, you know, they, they tell me to go into a direction. Mm-hmm. I'm bass backwards, so I usually go towards it, not away from I mean, he's it. used to driving tanks in the military. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you, you look at his body. Should... It's basically a tank. He's yeah. driving a tank just when he walks around. You make it big. You should take this guy to row with you. Uh, well, like, we, fact, we did that in Richmond. Uh, one of these days, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, but um, what ended up happening is the deputy was standing right in front of us. All of a sudden, her attention was pulled off to her right. Uh-huh. And so, as I turned, I noticed everybody's paying attention to the stands and not not the raceway. And so, I'm, I didn't know if it was a medical issue. I didn't know if somebody fell. I, I wasn't sure. So, you didn't sure. see how it started? No, no. Yeah. I, was, I was about two sections down. So, me being me, I went down towards it. And then by the time I got parallel, I could see the guy swinging. And the guy was about twice the other guy's size. Do you know why? Did anybody figure out what happened? Nothing was said as far as why other so than So it's just fact, basically this this white dude with the white shirt and the beard. Yes, that started is Started punching Brit- on a guy in front of him. Yeah, and that's a Britain Settle. He's from Elkin, which is where I'm from. Oh, okay. And he might even be a distant kin to me, but oh, I'll, I'll research that later. But he was swinging on the other guy that was in front of him. So in the angle... It's kind of yeah, awkward. Yeah, anytime as it you is. got the uh, height advantage. Yeah, you know. And, and so the he's dep- an ape- apex predator is what he is. And so the deputy that you see there, where the, on the picture on the right, um, she went up first, and so I end up following her up because she's half the guy's size. Yeah. And so I come, I come up the stairs and uh, started getting in between, and the guy in the red, which you can see, partially see him there, he's trying to sit there and trying to hold him as I'm trying to keep separated with from the guy with the long hair. And uh, so she's saying something to me there. I can't remember what, what was being said. And then about that time frame, the deputy that you see right behind me tapped me on the shoulder. Mm-hmm. And then finally, when I t- uh, finally got turned around, there was about four or five others there. So I'd step back and let and them I finish. And I heard that they kicked him out. Yes, sir. And then he snuck back in. Snuck back in. He d- he decided he, it was only a pit pit penalty. Mm-hmm. So he was just going to come back through later. And unfortunately, they the hit him with a trespass. How did he get back in after getting kicked out? He might have had, might have got another set of tickets, tried to scan through, wow. but, um, but they were, they were on top of it as far as security got yeah. it and then charged him for trespassing. Well, uh, I don't know what we're going to do. Get you, we're going to get you a body cam. And see there, I come up like here, I go again. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wonder why they, well, that guy took it off. Facebook I don't know. Like I said, I was going to ask him because, uh, you know, it was But he you can't even reach out to him, right? Like he blocked. Yeah, as, as soon as you send it, it says yeah. deliverable. Um, real quick, if you're at my shows this weekend in Greensboro, Georgia, or Jacksonville, North Carolina, this is it. 
this is the show I was telling you about. And yes, I got a whole stack of residual chicks. We're going to give it away here in a second. And for the lady who brought me as a wedding gift a cutting board in uh, Oakney Brewery, thank you. I, I, I left it there accidentally. So I've reached out to the manager of the club. I was going to show it on the show today because it was very sweet of her to do that. And, and thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll get it eventually. Uh, and thanks for coming out. Uh, I'm glad you're safe. Appreciate it. Uh, Mark, didn't you get into a fight or something happened with you? A lot of, this is going to be an angry episode. What happened with you guys? Angry time in this country. Yeah, I love it. Everybody's wanting to I got a funny everybody. TikTok video I sent to you yep. about a guy who was also angry at a store. That's what's leading up to this. Yeah. We'll share it here Everybody's in a minute. Everybody's mad. But mine was not as probably, as, well, it might have been as fun as well, his. You, but. you basically told me in a nutshell that our squad of friends yep. were out at the social house. Yeah. And some young buck came up and flirted with one of our friend's daughter. Yeah. And then what else? And then, uh, the, you know, the mother tried to get the guy to leave, walk away. He finally walked away. Some drunk guy. Yeah, the some drunk annoying. guy. Then his, you know, his uh, sister, wife, or whatever started mouthing. Um, then they come, they come in there wanting to, uh, wanting to throw down. The and big dudes were getting big, split up. We yeah, had, it, one of our big dudes was going against one of their big dudes. Yeah, I don't think they were used to dealing with fifty plusers. You know. Yeah, yeah. And so basically, we're talking I mean, about. We'll pull tent. you down. We'll pull you damn shirt up over your head. We'll pull you. Like we'll pull your hair. Hold you down. Yeah, we'll do some we'll yeah, kick yeah. you in the knee and run. Did but, uh, so it's like ten on ten almost. Yeah, it's probably like six on six. Six on six. 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 And, that's uh, still that's you know. Yeah, we got a we got a big guy in our group, uh, John, and uh, he 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 kind of took control of the situation. Um, took the guy back, knocked over a bunch of tables, glasses, chairs. Uh, but uh, our big guys. Police are, came. Yeah. Uh, nobody got hit. Nobody got that's hurt. Good. Nobody got charges pressed on them. Nobody got yeah, any warrants. No. Stay we all safe, went home. Everybody. I'm glad I was. I kind of wish I was there for it. Yeah. So that someone would have recorded this. Yeah. So was, you didn't record this fight. And you didn't record this fight. And we have no video proof of it. But thank you for. You scolded me last time for not recording. <laughs> I'm going to get you a body cam. I'm going to get you a body cam. I was in fifth my life. Now let me show you something that pays off. This person recorded. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. This angry interaction. And I sent it to Mark because I just think it's funny. This mm -hmm. dude getting pissed off. They're better trained than us. Let's watch this video. Let's get that audio. Looks like they're at a hardware store or something. Yeah. Don't say like Dr. Dan a good mood. I'm in the ass. Why are you? Shit, you can't Okay. Do Just keep on asking John now. I'm back out of the state if I ain't. Ask him. John, well, he, yeah. He John, yeah. yeah. Day John day couldn't roll me over if I was dead. Yeah. Yeah, and then you ass. either one there, you little limp noodle. <laughs> no trying, well, hell, I'm right here. Hell, if I ain't no more step around yeah. here, get knocked out. Son! Shot You're the one that come in mouthed. I'll knock that beard plum off of you. <laughs> then your boyfriend be mad because he'd have to glue it back on when he prison fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he spit on the floor. Look at all them pocket knives behind him. His hands. I need to pay. I'm um, busy doing payments down there. Chad will have to take care of you. Listen here, hussy. <laughs> Don't That's fire him up there. Word. That's an old Wilma, word. Wilma, there. I need two of them. One a little shorter. You know where they're at. I don't need it. That's your job. Shush. I'm doing payments. I'll down go back there. and get glimp. I have to. Don't get glimp. <laughs> no, I'm talking about how much we pay in here. By God, you should roll out the red carpet when I walk in the door. You understand me? How you like me now? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Your daddy. God. Oh, did you see him how he done that little mouth around there? He's all getting ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, you down at the gay bar all the damn time, yeah. Just, just take your little self on back there, come dispenser. <laughs> how many yeah. times? How many times you want? Yeah. Oh come my God. Dispenser. He's a big. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's a good. How thing. you like me now? Yeah. He's got some big arms though, right? Yeah, he's got some big I, hands. I wonder if he's fat or if he's strong or maybe he's both. He's 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 probably very country strong, as they call it. Yeah. Yeah. He probably yeah, works. He's country strong. He's probably a plumber. Wow. You know, lays pipe all day and turns wrenches. He's probably pretty <laughs> yeah. strong. He, you could tell he's a regular customer of this place. Yeah, he knew them all by name. And, he, you know, yeah, was... and they must have <laughs> given him shit in the past, yeah. and and now they just start recording him, you know, because they know something. Like, they want to agitate him. Yeah, they but were agging it on a little bit. He better roll a red carpet out for me. Yeah. Dang. He all right. 
uh, judging by those accents, that they sound like they're from Virginia. I was going like to say, it's probably Isaiah's uncle. <laughs> yeah, I, I, look, y'all look into that if you can. See if you can find out where this dude's from, where they're at. Maybe we'll get him to <laughs> call in, zoom into the show sometime. Yes, please, yeah, Isaiah needs a sponsor. Um, so, happy early Memorial Day, everybody. Right? Yeah. That's coming up this weekend. Next Monday. Or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this coming week. I mean, yeah, next Monday, I mean... Um, any big plans? I mean, we're going to hang out work. by the pool. We're going to yeah, go we're gonna hang out at your mama's house, hopefully. You're hang at your mama's house. No, your mama's got the pool, yeah, not mine. Has the pool. So we might do that. I'll be in D.C. I'm mar- marching it up there for the uh, Desert Storm veterans. Thank well, you. Well, it's for the for the uh, veterans in general, but I'll be with the Desert Storm. There you go. Thank you, buddy. All right, leave us a comment. Uh, last week I asked everybody, Martha Stewart, would you? Remember that? Did you see that? You weren't here last week. I wasn't here last week, but I 81 would. 81-year-old Martha Stewart made the cover of Sports I definitely would if she looked like that. You would? I would. Okay. Well, I asked everybody that. Shane Flint goes, nope, on Martha Stewart. The best way to not sell Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition is putting Martha Stewart on the cover. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think anyone – I don't know anybody who's ever bought a Sports Illustrated in the last 20 years. Swimsuit. Why does anybody pay for a magazine at all? I, I have the How's Sports even... Illustrated calendar, the swimsuit calendar. You bought a calendar? But I don't. Yeah, I have the swimsuit edition calendar. 23. What year? I, I think it's a 23. Really? <laughs> I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, you got to bring it in here. Um, all right. Well, thank you for the comment, Shane. I mean, I said a single John Wood. Mark said a single, a single Stamos Wood. Yes, yes. Isaiah yeah. Wood. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ball, did we ever get your answer? No, I wasn't here. I was taking care of business. But I would, uh, 81 years old, I, I'd actually consider it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> consider it. Just, he, so that's that, that's a yes. A yes. No, that's a it? yes. But the photo was obviously airbrushed, like heavily airbrushed. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, so, I, I, all of them are on magazines. Filter. She's yeah. got an Instagram or a TikTok filter yeah. or a Snapchat Keith, filter. Keith Hill, he said, are you going to do a podcast episode during the Sea Amigos cruise? I think that's a good idea. In fact, I think we probably will. Depends on if V. Allen Jackson is coming, which I think he is. V. Allen Jackson, are you still planning on coming on the Sea Amigos cruise? I think so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keith, if we, can, if we can convince Alan to come, maybe we can convince him to help us record a podcast. We did one two years ago. We did, and you spilled a drink uh, all yeah, over. Yeah, I was sloppy. I started <laughs> drinking right when I got on the boat, man, and I shouldn't have done yeah, this. Yeah, no. We, if we'll we don't do a podcast, we're still going to do a meet and greet uh, with happy hour, free cocktails for an hour, and we just hang out and get to know each other. Let's do that. We'll, we will do, yeah. maybe we can do a little bit of both. Yeah, we can do, um, we can do a little something. Kathy Hartley Wilder, she said, first time joining your live show, saw you on Nate Bargatze podcast a while back and loved you. Oh, Kathy, I love you too. I am spoken for it. But I appreciate the kind words. And thanks for watching. Hit the share button. Bob Haynes, there is only one logical explanation here. Martha Stewart is a witch that kept young, that kept young from all the souls. Oh, she stayed young. Okay. Martha Stewart is a witch that stayed young from all the souls she's feasted on. Mm. Yeah. Uh, That's that movie, uh, Jim Carrey's first movie, Once Bitten. Did you ever see that? No. Yeah, it was before he got famous. She she went to prison, right? So yeah, well, she's got street cred. She might have but got some isn't that how the witches there. in Hocus Pocus stay alive? Probably um, they stole it from the, you know, uh, Jim Carrey, Ryan Jr. Do better with video, Ginger dude. <laughs> Ginger dude. I replied to him. I said, my apologies, Ryan. And then he replied back to me. He goes, Mr. Reap, are you saying a fake apology to me or are you being serious? And I said, I'm dead serious, man. And Ryan, you know, I I am serious. I apologize. We did not mean for the show to end the way that it ended. We had bad storms here last week and I think that knocked out our internet. So I'm please forgive me and I hope that you'll stick around and give us more feedback. All right, I say it's time to get on to our first segment of the show. All right, this is fun. Um, Me and my young intern over here, Isaiah, we thought it would be interesting if Gen X played against Gen Z in video games. 
and we recorded ourselves doing that. I think this will be self-explanatory. Check this out, everybody. Bam, boy! Woo! Come on with it! Why, why am I looking at these guys? I mean, this is attempted murder at this point. <laughs> you suck at this game, period. You suck in life. This is called a keyboard, by the way. I don't know if they had this when you was growing up. That's all we had growing up. We had a joystick with this game. So I, I've never played this game with a keyboard, but that's what we got today. I feel like, really? This is jump? Let's no, not that's anything. not jump. Where's jump? So you don't know what you're doing either. So that's it, bud. That's you go you this way, jump. you go this way, you jump over stuff. Let me tell you about Harry Pitfall, okay? Remember Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? Yes, sir. This is basically, I feel like it's based on that, so. A low rent Indiana Jones. Yeah, this real is what simple. I'm you can play this all day long. I don't have to play against you, but I'm gonna help you play this game, all right? So you just move forward, you jump over holes, you wanna get treasures, you don't wanna get eaten by alligators. Now right away, you fell in the hole. You don't wanna, that's a log, you gotta jump over the log. Now go that way. This way? Yeah, back, yeah. No, 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 go back down, go back down, go back down. Okay, now go back that way. Jump over the scorpion. Dead. So here's the thing, there are less buttons involved in this game. So it shouldn't be that hard. But he's now. moving slow. All right, jump over these two logs. What? Yeah, you don't want to fall into the tar pit. Now, look, jump over the log. Now wait, jump over that one. Now go, now go over to the, to the edge, wait. Jump, jump, go over to the edge, quick, now. Now stop. Okay. There we go. Now jump off of that, now, go that way. Right, Why? Look, you have to, uh, I think you push up to get no, off of it. Sh no, you gotta wait till you're <laughs> off. Yeah. It's harder than it looks. So that's how you do is just run and jump? Yeah. I have a question for you. What's up with his face? Like he has no face. That's the best we could do. You know how much this game cost back in the day? How much? I don't, I don't remember. It's a lot. So here's the goal. At some point, we're going to get to another screen. And when we do, I want you to, uh, we'll be, uh, yeah. <laughs> you jump right in the pit. Okay. I think you're getting better. But look how realistic the trees are. <laughs> hang on, hang on. You, want, you don't want that to hit your head. Yeah, you, the, so Isaiah cannot get past the first screen in Pitfall. All right, so here's the deal with the alligators. All right. You're trying to jump on their head, not the mouths. Yeah, because you don't want to get eight. Oh, that's not good. You're having problems with this third hole here. I don't understand. Now go. <laughs> get a little bit closer. Go now! Oh boy. I mean, he just like committed suicide. It looked like you straight up tried to kill yourself. I would really love for you to get past this screen. Mm. Oh! Hey, I got it. No. The, the down button. Mm. You're so close. All right, the alligators is as far as we've got. Mm. You want to try it? All right, let's get Cobble in here. This is another Gen Z on the show. He's probably better than the both of us. At this video is games. exactly how it looked, though. Like, I remember when, when this game came out, it looked just like this. Ooh! Okay, hang on, hang on. Go! Yeah! There we go! All right. Now, watch this. See, this is the, the underworld here. You gotta jump over the scorpion. Mm. I jumped too late. There's a snake. Now wait, wait, wait. Here's what you gotta do with the snake. You gotta walk up to it, okay? Mm -hmm. Pull your pants down. <laughs> now here's the thing. Now hang on, hang on. Jump over. No, no, no. Go back, go back. St st stop, stop. Let me talk to you for a second. Wait, wait, wait. Jump over that. All right. Time it. Run. Wait, wait for it to go like all the way. When it goes back down, then run over it. No, you gotta go make it. You did it. Same with that. You can use the rope or you don't have to use the rope if you time it just right. Oh, you're screwed. <laughs> Not too bad. That guy, look at the way he runs. He's very stiff. He is very stiff. <laughs> Looks like he has to take a knot. Is this the uh, best game you've ever played or the best game of all time? 
Oh, it sucks. I think you were getting better at Pitfall. Yeah, I think as the game progressed. Well, I will say this. Um, WWE, was it 20, 2K2023? Yeah. It's too complicated. I feel like over time I could figure it out. I just got shit to do. Right. I don't have time to mess with it. Pitfall, pretty easy, pretty basic. Is it the most boring game you've ever played? It was pretty boring. Yeah. Let's say five sun drops are the best. I'm ready. And five Bud Lights are the worst. I'm ready. Uh, five Bud Lights. So I dislike Pitfall and you think WWE is just meh. It's just okay. Uh, we should play another game that neither one of us care about and see how we do. Alrighty. To see who the better like gamer is. Like a random, is. right. A random game. Yeah. Something we've never, never, you've never played, nor I've never played. What's a good one, Kobol? Um, you ever heard of Gang Beasts? Ah. Oh, no, no, it's Laffy Taffy. It's Laffy Taffy uh, Day, everybody. Happy I Laffy, Taffy, uh, Laffy Taffy Day. Uh, Isaiah, that was fun. I can't wait to play it the next was. game. Oh, I'm, on, I'm really excited about Yeah, so stick around yeah. for uh, the next uh, version of that where we play uh, that game. Okie dokie. Shall we take a quick break, the Alan Jackson? Yeah, all right. Listen, I got money to give away. Don't forget about that in here in a little bit. The very famous, very funny, very charming Carlos Navarro from Walking Dead is going to zoom in here in a minute. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more country-ish after this. What you doing? Oh. Hey, Mom. Uh, just tossing some bags, playing a little cornhole. You want to play? I don't know. I haven't done this in a long time and I can't really see the board that good. Oh, come on, you got this. Let's take this bag, underhand it, real simple. Oh, look at there, huh? I told you, you're a natural. <laughs> Mark, hey buddy, I know you think you're the top dog at Cornhole, but I want you to get Sean. Meet me at the studio in 20 minutes. <laughs> Guys, wow. we've got to do something about this. Yeah, and we should start a cornhole league. Yeah, a country-ish cornhole league. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. Captain John Reap here at your service, and I want you to go cruising with me on the Sea Amigos Cruise, baby. Brand new ship, Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas. It's the world's largest cruise ship. Come aboard, I'm expecting you. November 5 through 11, baby. Comedy, karaoke, podcasting. <laughs> Come get tropical with us in November. November the 5th, we leave out of Port Canaveral, Florida, and we're cruising to, to Perfect Day at Coco Cay, Cozumel, Mexico, Costa Maya, Mexico, and Roatan, Honduras. It's gonna be a breeze. We're doing an 80s, 90s karaoke theme night. Come dress to impress for that. We're doing stand-up comedy from yours truly and other friends. And we're doing a VIP free cocktail meet and greet night. And I want you to come hang out with me on the Sea Amigos Cruise. 
Book your cabin right now. Go to johnreap.com slash cruise. We'll see you on the ship. All right, book that cabin ASAP. I'm going, Stamos is going, Sebastian is going. I'm planning on being there. Is, yeah. um, is Elliot going? I don't think so. Hmm. Oh, well, well, you're you're going? I'm have you already, I don't, have you booked a cabin? I'm just curious. No, you, okay. you and me talked offline. Well, maybe we should do something. Maybe we should have a contest. Okay. Between Isaiah and Ball. And I'm saying maybe. Yeah. I'm just workshopping this idea right now. We got till November for the cruise, right? Yeah, probably a little before that, before the ticket sales go How away. many months away is that? That's six months. Whoever can lose the most weight in six months between Isaiah and Sergeant Mark Habibal, maybe they get a cabin. You can have the cabin, Mark. I like food too much. <laughs> oh. You don't even want to try? <laughs> really? Not even going to try? Damn, what, if he does, what if he gains weight? I knew you were easy, but damn. That was too easy. <laughs> Think about it. I like food would too you, much. Would you shave your head? No, no. Bald. I want them to. I want them to trim up. Oh, yeah. Worried about him. Everybody. Me too. All of us. We should probably you know, worry about our health. You know. Yeah. But we all got parents that are ailing. Oh yeah. Always. And that's yeah. where we're next. So I want my boys to live forever. And I appreciate that. Yeah. So maybe we make it a contest and make it a fun segment. And get I, no. I think we should do like that Tom Segura and uh, Burt Kreischer thing too while we're at it. What's that? What is that? Where they do the dance video. Oh, yeah. I do I do want to do a dance video. <laughs> oh, what did you find out about that angry guy in TikTok video? So he's apparently they got a whole series of them. And so his nickname is Muffin. <laughs> so Muffin, there's yeah. There's more videos? There's more video. And they yes. got a couple of nicknames. One of the guys in there, his name is Stuffin. And Stuffin is talking about Muffin. So I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? But uh, they're out of Arkansas. And you can really tell they, uh, he knows about this and he plays up to it. So he, But he looks uh, legit pissed off in these videos. And the one yeah. video I saw. Yeah. I, th I think he I think he lets it get under his crawl and uh -huh. like you like you were saying earlier uh, the people kind of egg it on yeah so even if he goes so in, they know I bet you they know he has a short temper yep and they're just like let's stoke him because this is funny and he don't care by yeah. God yeah you know, yeah one of those guys what's that I'll come around that counter he's ready um yeah oh yeah, he's good here, so he's good. Uh, all ready for you if you're, Guys, you're ready for him I need you to be quiet for a minute Whoosh. I mean while I'm talking to Carlos Navarro, because uh, this dude's, he's a good actor. Uh, he's a, a, a radio host of a gigantic morning show in Orlando called Monsters in the Morning. He's very inspirational and just funny. He used to be a comedian as well. Uh, who's zooming? I'll tell you who's zooming. Carlos Navarro. <laughs> And he's joining me right now, the very famous, very energetic, entertaining Carlos Navarro. How are you, buddy? I'm doing wonderful. And um, and I just want to say thank you for allowing me to be on your amazing show. Uh, we've known each other for over 10 years. Right. Um, you know, we've only made love once, which I, is weird. Yeah. You know. I feel bad about that. I feel like it, in 10 years, one, more than one would have been at this point. It's because I hardly I'm remember it. We were so <laughs> hammered, and it was Key West, and gosh, oh, there's so much yeah. oil and, and math. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a good time. It was good. Dude, uh, no, thanks for doing this. It's been a minute. For those of you who don't know, I mean, Carlos, uh, he's done all kinds of stuff. Acting, uh, comedy, stand-up comedy. The guy's uh, uh, all over uh, the radio station uh, in Orlando. Number one show in Orlando called Monsters in the Morning for how long now? Dude, we just got number one again, man. And it's been for, honestly, over 20 years we've been dominating that spot from, you know, from when we took it over from Howard. And you've, you've been there all along the way, man. Every year you, you pop in a couple times. You're one of the boys. You're on our Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh, of guests, which is a very uh, 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 highly ac acclaimed uh, you know, wall. Very so, honored to be on that wall. It's just good pros. to see you. I'm, I'm looking over your right shoulder. I see Hawkeye right now. Is that the newest thing that's going on right now for you? You've done a lot of stuff. Well, I mean, let me take it back. 
What do you think, for you, uh, do you get recognized the most from? Like, if you're out oh. in the street walking around, people go, hey, it's well, that guy. Number one in Florida, it's the Monsters. It's okay. easily the Monsters because we've been around for so long and we have a U- we're on YouTube and we've been on... But then Hawkeye. Hawkeye was really, really hugely successful, and it was me and my bald head and my crazy face, <laughs> and and so um, and so that one. And then Walking Dead probably because when I do conventions and stuff. But I had hair then, and I was on a horse, and I was yeah. killing zombies. Uh, so, um, but generally, just probably you know, like when you sit and talk to somebody, and then you're like, oh yeah, I was on the like, oh yeah, you, you know how that is, you know how yeah. that is, you know? yeah, so, um, right? Because I knew you from Monsters first. Yeah. And then I just, because I follow you, I start seeing all these other things. I'm like, go, go. Thanks, man. How did it begin? I mean, what started for you first? Like, was it, Uh, yeah. Honestly, making movies and stuff as a kid. And then I got an internship at the radio station, like with Russ and Bo, with Russ at 17. Like, I just walked in and there, and so then I, then, and then I kind of like started trying to be funny and making jokes and like, hey, this kid's funny. And I was on there for about 10 years, and then I wanted to act. And you know how the entertainment is like, oh, back in the day, you only had to do one. You could only do one. And they were like, yeah. you can't do that. So they kind of fired me. Then I went and started acting and booked a bunch of stuff for about five or six years. Whoa. And then they, yeah. Wait, then so they asked you, me to come back. You were gone for five from the radio show. Yeah, dude. Yeah, they fired me because they wanted me to be as it was a different time. There was 2007. And for those who don't know, now everybody's got six or seven hustles yeah. going on. Yeah. And it's commonplace. But Clear Channel was very and the show and it was just a different place. It was like, no, man, this is it. This is the only thing you're going to do. And uh, and I just was never it was radio. I still love it's my passion. But acting and the movies and TV. I was a Steven Spielberg kid. And so that was always my goal. And so I had to give it a shot. And luckily I did. And to credit to Russ and, and, and iHeart, they were very kind and were like, no, man, come, we want you to come back and wow. we won't mess with your acting. That's amazing. <laughs> I, did, I, yeah. I guess I forgot that part. For five, so was that a scary five years? I mean, because... Super scary, dude. Yeah. Super. I mean, I lost everything. I was, I was kind of, you know, I don't take all the blame, but I definitely had enough blame to, um, to have been fired. Um, and it was the best thing that ever happened because I actually, like I said, it was like right out of high school, I got this really amazing gig and it's not like a DJ gig. I know people are thinking like, Oh, he's a, no, this talk show is like a big talk show. And even, you know, like, uh, and so, so I was kind of full of myself to be honest. Like I was like, Oh (laughs) shit, look at me, you know? And, and not like maliciously. Um, but then I got fired. I lost everything. It was 2007, lost my house lost my job, lost everything, and went on this kind of path of learning who I was, which allowed me to be 42 years old now and like being a personal development coach, living my dream of acting, doing this, because I, I learned the hard, hard, hard way of, of how to get on, back on path and be where I'm at. Yeah. Are, are you, did, you, did this all start, you're in Orlando now, did this all start yeah. in Orlando for you? Yep. 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 It, um, acting. I'll tell you kind of the genesis of the acting was kind of uh, very chronological. I was I took an acting class. I basically said, OK, I'll be in student films. I did student films. I became an extra. I was an extra on Monday Night Football. I just kept saying yes until eventually I booked a commercial with Derek Jeter. And then I got on Prison Break. And then I got another. And then I got on a movie with Jason Bateman where where I was funny, and, and so I got some good stuff out of that. So I kept, as you know, like in entertainment, man, it, uh, like whenever you book something for your listeners, for your viewers, everything, like it's a lottery, man. When you book anything entertainment-wise, you're going against like the best, and you're, you're, may you be the most talented? Maybe. Or maybe you look like, uh, you, you look like somebody they like that yeah. was in their family, and they <laughs> want to have you there. Or, right. So, so I was fortunate enough to keep my passion going in the midst of some crazy ass shit, John, to be honest. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'd love to know what that crazy ass shit is. I'm only allowed to Ready? talk about it. Arrest three <laughs> times. Alcoholism, bankruptcy, f- fucking everything, dude. Like yeah. I was a wild motherfucker and I, and I pushed <laughs> it to the limit yeah. and alcohol was really my bad uh, thing. And, and so I lost it all, man. I was, I was ridiculed. They, a lot of people counted me out and, um, 
Wow. And I, I guess I needed that to learn. Well, what a comeback. Thanks, dude. For Thanks. real. I, I really <laughs> didn't know all that history part of it, but it's good to hear that because it's inspiring for a lot of people. Yeah. You ready for this? Yeah. So, you know, I, one of the last times I drank, I was a maniac and, you know, I never like hit my wife or anything, like that, but I was just a victim. Oh, my mom drank. <laughs> oh, you know, I was Hispanic, passionate about blah, blah. <laughs> and then I just, I'll never forget it. She looks, she goes, and I always wanted to book The Walking Dead. And I swear to God, John, for five years, I tried to book The Walking Dead and I wouldn't book it. They would give me all these different auditions. And she looked at me and I remember, she's like, when you quit drinking, watch how you book The Walking Dead. Watch. And I just remember being like, and I shit you not, I quit drinking. And like three months later, I book a series regular, two seasons. And the wow. Lord, and whether anybody wants to be religious or not, and if you take this, I, you walked, you've been to plenty of these parties and you walk in, top shelf liquor. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. And yeah. then it hit me right there. Man, I would have played the fool if I would have been the asshole drinking right now when everybody's smooth and I would have been here. <laughs> Whoa, what a maniac, you know? Right. Oh, right, don't work right. Out. That's, oh, man, that is so crazy. Um, you're right, though. Like, it's weird how you will book things. You put it in the universe. Or she put it in the universe. Well, you wanted it first. <laughs> yes. So that was, a, yeah. And then she affirmed it. I really feel like our mind only has so much space. We only have so much time. And the universe goes, that's yours. You have it. But you got to make this choice first. And it's really hard to make a choice. But once you make it, you're like, oh, that was the secret. And then the universe goes, boop, there you go. Well, tell me a little bit about Hawkeye. Um, when when did you tape that? And I know it just came out, like, what, a two, couple months ago? No, no, it came out um, last year sometime. It's been a year but, already? Um, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's, you know, they those Marvel shows, they move fast. Yeah, there's a uh, lot, yeah. Um, you know what, dude? It was a lifelong dream to be a bad guy in, in like, a Marvel show. You know, like, how cool is that shit? And, and, I'd, and I'd auditioned for them before. I actually got a call back on one, and I would have been a security guard and an old Ant-Man. Or I, I mean, <laughs> you know how it is. You see yeah. these movies probably like, yeah, audition for that one. Yeah, audition for that yep, one, you know? Yep. Um, and I'll be honest, it was, uh, it was during uh, COVID, and uh and it was an insane time it was it was uh you know everything was very slow and it was just a very small audition that came through and my agent goes hey man check this out it said marvel and it said six month shoot and it said looking for one for one of their new shows this is before wandavision came out before any of that stuff came out and so i was like right. you know, like you know when you see a gigantic audition you're like oh that'll be fun if yeah, that ain't yeah. happening i don't even you know, look like, at that part i just audition and then go well, if I get the part, then I have to worry about that. But yeah. Yes. Yeah, because now I've had that in my head and I've written that down. Same with Walking Dead. I would write down, I'm going to be on Walking Dead. I'm going to be on Walking Dead. And I made that happen. And so I did the same thing with this. I went into autopilot. I was like, I'm going to have fun with this. I'm not going to think about it. And I let it go. I was auditioning for Ozark at the same time for the bad guy on Ozark. So I was. It one scene was... This like being tortured and I put my heart and soul. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm, you know, snots coming out of my face. Oh, yeah. And, and, and I'm like, that's and then the other one I straight up that I played in Hawkeye was the bro. And I was like, yo, look, let's do this, bro. Let's go over here. Hawkeye. <laughs> I didn't even know what it was for. And that was like, oh, that's fun. But that's that's the dream. Right. And so yeah. I go to the museum with my daughter to a, a little field trip and I get a call from my agent. I'm like, Oh, did I book Ozark? He's like, no, dude, you booked Marvel. Ooh. And I was like, what? Wow. And yeah. Where did, they, where did they tape it? New York, LA, Atlanta. Wow. So for six months, you're bouncing around. Uh, I'm sure you came home some, but yep. that is wow. Yeah, man. Yeah. And because it was COVID and yeah. this shot in December of 2020, we shot in Times Square there was nobody, nobody in the streets. Yeah. It was an odd time. I, we were getting tested every day. And if you got tested early on, hey, man, it was three tracks in Mafia. Maybe they make it two. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a very crazy time to be shooting the show. No Marvel shows had been out yet. And we were like the, the bring it home Christmas show. And the experience is one that we could, I'm sure we could talk about forever if you're even a fan of it at all. But they couldn't have been kinder, John. The budgets were massive. The people I work with are friends with to life. I get to do these convention gigs till I'm an right. old man. 
You know? I know. <laughs> you are now a piece of that the MCU life, that the, world yeah. forever. Yeah, I mean, man. Those, and do you still, I mean, um, do you jump on those? those oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Luck, luckily, I got a great uh, manager that I've had, uh, Lori, who uh, we go all around. The, you know, and then and then I actually get to go with my buddy Alex. and Because here's the crazy thing, dude. Alex, the, there's three bros, for those that are watching. Track we're bad Soup guys. Mafia, yes. Yes, exactly. And then uh, I'm from Orlando. The other dude's from Canada. The other dude's from Poland. They did a worldwide search. Oh, wow. To find. And so but, it's just like. For all these things to work out, I kept a very, very positive mindset in the sense of I just made it my job to like, this is what I'm going to keep doing. And man, it, it really paid off um, because so many times, as you know, in entertainment, you just want to quit. You're just like, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Wow. So, yeah, Carlos, man. thank you so much, man. Dude, Where can you. people find you? I know you got a website. You know what? I have, I'm one man. But I have two websites. Who's thought of this? Ready? Here we go. I am CarlosNavarro.com. And then I said, you know what? I can't keep it all there. Till the top never stop. Dot com. <laughs> That's my personal development. One man. Two <laughs> websites. Well, and you're taking over the internet, too. Thank you, Carlos. We're trying. We're trying, bro. We're trying. Thank you for having me, man. Carlos Navarro, everybody. Let's do it. Yeah, baby. Look him up. Funny dude. Great guy. Thank you, Carlos, for doing that. Um, any interesting comments in the comments section? In yes, turn. sir. We got a comment from Jennifer Mowry. She said, my daughter was at the Jacksonville show, and she had a great time. Oh, good. Yes. That was an interesting, fun show. It was at this place called uh, Limelight. Turns out I had performed there before when it was called the Carolina. But I'm mm. uh, glad they came out. Thanks to everybody who came out to that show. I say we give some money away, buddy. What do you think? It's Let's yours. Do it. Let's do it. I've got a lot of residual checks here. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, six seven. seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 11, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. All right, so what we're going to do is you at home right now, type in a number between one and fourteen. And the first number that Isaiah or Ball see, they're going to yell it out at me. And that's the number of check we're going to choose. That's how you know this stuff's random. It's not rigged. Don't know how much these checks are for. So right now, leave a number. And we're going to open one of these checks. And we're going to give somebody at home this check if they want it. One of these checks. Okay, I got Keith Hill with number nine. Number nine. You ready? Yep. One, One, two, two three, three, four, four five, five, six, six seven, eight, eight nine. nine. All right. Here's a check. Now, for those of you who don't know what this game is, I've done some acting in my day, like Carlos. I've been in some movies, sitcoms, TV shows, commercials, uh, voiceovers, adult films, you name it. I've done it. When they air them, they have to pay me. They're called residual checks. I thought I'd make a game out of it. So I'm going to open it live on the show. I don't know how much is in here. You call in with a guess. Closest person to the amount is going to win the check. It is a game that we like to call How Much Is That Screen Actors Guild Residual? You guys be getting your hernias checked next week. My doctor wouldn't check that last time for some reason. <laughs> Told me not to worry about that or my, uh, whatever you call it when they do the, what's it called? Prostate. Prostate. Oh. Okay, boys. This is for one episode of a TV sh show. Sebastian's favorite. Jane the Virgin. One episode of Jane the Virgin, chapter 68. And uh, I played an exterminator in that episode but uh this is for internet rental and s v o d i don't know what that stands for SVOD. video on demand i don't know what the s part is sexy sexy video on demand that's john reap <laughs> that's jane the virgin on john reap one episode stamos how much is this check we're gonna go with 444 444 ball 
I'm going to go with 666. 666, yeah. Isaiah. Got a match. You're going to hell, Mark. You are going to hell. I'm going to go $7.76. Oh. $7.76. If I had to give a check away to someone in this room, it would be intern Isaiah. Ooh. He was the closest one. Seven dollars or more. So that's how you gauge how you should be guessing when you call in. Uh, I see that we have some numbers, people in the on hold already. Now what we have here is what I call the spinning ball of balls. It is an orange cage ball with other balls inside of it with numbers on it. And what? Why do we have that? Marcus Thomas is going to spin the ball of balls and pick a ball with a number on it, and that's the number of caller that we choose. So it's random. Even the callers that we choose is random. Okay. Yep. Don't matter if you call in first or late. We don't know the number of balls. Spin the ball of balls. Pick a ball. Pick your balls. Just one for now. Okay. And what do we got? What number is Let me it? Tell you, you want Read to tell it. You. I'm going to go with uh, 32. Caller number 32. The Alan Jackson. Whenever you're ready, let him into the showroom and let's see how they guess. No one's got it exactly right. It's been a while. Uh, they're in the room. Okay, John Reap here. Who's this? Hello, who's this? And you're on the line. Who's this? Okay, who am I talking to? What station do you jam to? <laughs> What's the phrase that pays? What's the number one radio station in the Unifor area? Alan, do we lose them? Uh, yeah, they're gone. Okay. okay. Spin the ball of balls. This person has opted oh, out. Okay. So we're going to okay. go with the next caller. We're that was your go. winner right there. That could have been. Could have been <laughs> caller 27. Caller number 27, the Alan Jackson. Whenever you're ready, let caller number 27 into the room. And All we'll right, see. they're in the room. Hi there, this is John Reap. Who are you? Mike Enderley. What's going on, John? Mike Enderley. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Pretty good. This is painting right now, trying to get ready for an open mic next week. I hear you. He's uh, created some of the artwork on the uh, fan art wall. Mm -hmm. And a uh, funny dude, nice guy. Believe I ran into him in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul area last time, right? Mall of America, too. Mall of America. Yeah. That's right. So, um, how many times have you watched Jane the Virgin? Oh. Uh. <laughs> one, two, oh, that's everybody's no one, uh, they feel bad they feel bad they that they haven't watched never. one I, listen I don't watch no, it either I'm just an actor I'm a gun for hire I'm man a fan of you. Yeah. You like I'm a fan yourself, of you I'm not a fan of the show <laughs> same here um, but they still gotta pay you they gotta pay me how much is you this know, check I Michael all, I gotta help my buddy keep his fucking mom's swimming pool going <clears throat> what did he say say again I said I gotta help you keep making payments on mom's house <laughs> well, it's paid for, but I like where your head, your heart's at. Um, yeah. How much is this check, buddy? I'm gonna guess seven fifty-five. Seven dollars and fifty-five cents. Okay, good guess. Hang on the line. Don't go anywhere. You might have won the check. Put them on hold. The Allen Jackson. Marcus, spin the ball of balls. Let's get a new oh, caller. I already got one in the hat. In here, and let's find out if this person. Oh, can. number two. Caller number two. Dose number two. Let them on into the showroom. The Allen Jackson. Let's find out. If All this right, person... they're in the room. Hi there. This is John Reap. Who are you? This is Jacob Wheat. What's up, John Reed? What up, Jake? Jacob Wheat? Where are you calling from, Jacob? I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Ooh. Tulsa, living on Tulsa time. Did yeah, you man. know that if you spell Tulsa backwards, it is a slut? Yes, oh. it's a slut. Huh. A slut backwards is Tulsa. That's right. Is that a word still used today? Which one? Slut. Tulsa? Slut. Or is that an old oh, one? Oh, yeah. I don't hear slut too much. You don't hear slut or hussy. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Muffin either. loves hussy. Yeah, it's, it's... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jacob, uh, are, you in a, um, are you in a Holiday Inn Express? No, never. I'm in. I'm an I'm a H Honors guy. Oh, that's so right. I'm a yeah. He's in a. Yeah. I, can we turn him up a little bit, guys? Uh, uh, Jacob, uh, tell me the name of the hotel again. 
Hampton Inn. Hampton, Hampton Inn. Inn. That's right. Okay. Okay, Jacob. I uh, hope you've been good, man. It's been a minute since I've talked to you. Everything good? Everything's great. Okay, you got some big memorial plans lined up? Nope. <laughs> I love it. He's a, he's a road dog. <laughs> One day at a time. He's a road dog. That's right. Okay, Jacob, how much is this Screen Actors Guild residual check? $6.69. Ha <laughs> ha! 69 69 Yeah. Put them on hold, the Alan Jackson. One person, one person's guess was better than the other, but no one's got it exactly right, and I don't do math, yeah. so I don't know who's winning. Jacob didn't listen. We he, got he, one more caller. Though. He just won't do the sixty-nine. Yeah, that's okay. I like that. He's being entertaining, Marcus. I like him too. Yeah. All right. Spin the ball oh, of balls. Forty-four. Oh, caller number forty-four. That was my sophomore year. My uh, football jersey number. And then I had to change it to 40 my junior year. Uh, and I was 40 after that. Somebody come in bigger and better than you. Yeah, that there was a bigger. 44 Don't is a you highly up. sought out number. I'm going to need that number, boy. Yeah. Deanna Jackson, let caller number 44 into the room. All right, they are in the room. Hi there, this is John Reap. Who are you? Samantha. Samantha oh, Don hey, Kingston, Samantha. my dear, as I live and breathe, I hope you're doing good. I know you wanted, you're asking for prayers. Do you want to give us details, or is it too personal? Personal. Okay. Well, thoughts and prayers for we Samantha. We will pray either way. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Thanks for calling in. Um, Jane the Virgin, one episode. What What are you feeling? $7.75. Yeah. $7.75. Put her on hold, the Ellen Jackson. Okay. This is where it gets tricky. Because what I've just done was hand the check to Sergeant Mark having eight balls deep, hero. Yeah, well, I noticed all the numbers are pretty close together. We don't have a big range. We don't have a 30, mm -hmm. and we don't have a dollar. It's all right around that 8 to $6 range. Yeah. So. Well, that's because I, I think they are listening, and they knew, based off y'all's guesses, to keep it within that number. Right. And, so, and, which is smart. And you did say Isaiah was would have the got closest. the check at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Neither me or Mark would have got the check. No. So hopefully they guessed close to that. <laughs> but what we've done was give the check to Ball, who's giving it to the Allen Jackson, and he should be crunching the numbers back there right now. He does math for us on our behalf. John, he went, yeah. John, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I need to interrupt for a second. We have a, uh, we have a judgment call to make on this one here. Oh, hmm. no. I don't yeah. want to do that. Have I? Did we not do the taxes? No. Okay, we have to go with... The actual amount of the check, because that's what's at stake. All right. You're going to go with the actual amount of the check. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Feed it through the machine. Now, right, I just want to make sure before I start the whole machinery, the right, calculation right. process. No use firing it up until we know that. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. All wow. Right. Let's see how fast the algor can, algorithm machine can handle that curveball we just threw at it. Well, luckily he didn't feed it in yet, because yeah. he would have fed it in, and then he would have asked would have got the results, and it would have been wrong. And then we'd have to fit it again, which makes the power bill more expensive. I know Alan's been really – he's not been happy with the power bill we run this thing. That's true. Uh, it pumps out a lot of energy. Which is why we need, you know, we need more Patreon supporters. If you go to countryish.com and you click on support, you can be a Patreon supporter. Yeah. You can help us pay the power bill. We don't really want to go to battery-operated uh, machine, do we? Not yet. We're not uh, – We're not. the infrastructure is not ready. It's really not. Uh, I, I don't want to unhook the thing. Uh, and I can only try. I can only imagine unhooking it and trying to get it hooked to batteries. Right. It's it took and, some time to set up. And the generator that we have is a little rusty. And Isaiah's has not put gas in it in a while. It's been a minute. It's yeah. been a while since I put That's gas in the That's because it's the two-step process where it's half oil, half gas, right? Oh, two yeah. cycle. Two cycle. Yeah. yeah, two cycle. Yeah. It's an old old algorithm machine. You ever notice two cycle motorcycles? They're so loud. I hate it. Why is that? I don't Why are they know. not as loud as gas running motorcycles? If I'm being honest with you, I'm looking forward to a time where we uh, have a lot of electric r running things. Like when you wake up in the morning, what are you, you're supposed to hear bur Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Wow. Let me finish my thought. When you wake up in the morning, you just want to hear birds chirping, yeah. right? You don't want to hear a Harley. You don't want to hear a Harley or a lawnmower or a weed eater. Going <laughs> a leaf blower. Yeah. <coughs> a leaf blower. Anyway. The older you get, the more that stuff bothers you. So I get it. Wow. Okay. 
Well, like I said, I don't know who the winner is. There's only one person that I know of who knows the actual winner of this check. And that person is the Alan Jackson. After taxes, he recrunched the numbers. In this episode, for Jane the Virgin on the CW Network, after taxes, only one person will win the check. Only one. And I say now is a good time. 9.02 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, May 23rd. We're going to find out who the winner of this check is. The Alan Jackson, whenever you're ready, you let him in the showroom. All right, they're in the room. This is John Reap. Who are you? My name is Jacob Wheat. Jacob Wheat! Wow. Calling in from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Rock the vote, man. The um, Jacob Wheat, your guess was for how much? Six dollars and sixty-nine. <laughs> That's right. The actual amount of this check was for five dollars and eighty-two cents. Mm-hmm. You were the closest oh after taxes. Before taxes, it was nine eleven. Nine eleven before taxes. Nine dollars and eleven cents. And I did not look at the check. Because sometimes they make these checks out to me. Sometimes they make them out to my company. And this one apparently was made out to me. Like maybe I didn't give him my company info. It's like a personal check. So $5.82, Jacob Wheat, is yours if you want it. Or you can play Let's Make a Deal and go for an item in the mystery box of merchandise. What will it be, Jacob? Uh, Let's go for a deal, Mr. Grin Reaper. All right, yeah. All right, so what we're going to do now, you have forfeited this check. It's mine. That's no longer on the table. But what is on the table is any item in the mystery box of merchandise. And, Mark, I don't know. I'm trying to find out, Brad Pitt. Hang on, buddy. I got to talk to Stamos. What we're going to do is he's going to play the claw game. He's just going to reach his hand in the box, whatever he grabs. That's what you're going to get. You ready, Marcus? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. Dude, I hope you're feeling lucky. Because you just won yourself a St. Patrick's Day hat. It just simply says lucky on it. Yes. Now, here's the good thing about the mystery box of merchandise. I never say it's my merchandise. I just say it is merchandise. (laughs) But you're going to get the hat, and you're going to get a koozie, and you're going to get a belt buckle, whatever else we got back there. My goodness. You're going to get the the country-ish pack, my friend. Prize pack. Prize pack. Isn't that great? I'm so thrilled. (laughs) What hotel hotel would you like that delivered to, Jacob? (laughs) <laughs> I'll send Alan my own address. <laughs> All right. Okay, Jacob. So, yeah, you know what to do, right? Yes, sir. Okay, buddy. Uh, good to hear from you again. Thanks for calling in, and uh, congratulations to Jacob Wheat and everybody else who played the game. <gasps> How, How much, much is this? Trish? Trish? Okay. We forgot to ask him. What are you doing in the Well, there's no cash. That's why I didn't do it. But, oh, yeah. Yeah, we kept the chip. <laughs> That's all good. Yeah, but I like doing that part. I do, too. Um, What are we going to do with all that hat? We're going to do all that. Happy National Taffy Day, everybody. Happy Lucky Penny Day. See, that that made sense. He won a hat that says Lucky on it, and today Mm -hmm. is National Lucky Penny Day. I knew that. Look at that symmetry, huh? Look at that symmetry. All righty. The show is almost over. Time for the dismount. Uh, Let's plug some tour dates. But if you got any comments that you want me to read or address right now, in this moment, do it now. Post it now. The interns are looking at it. And while you're doing that, I'll plug a tour date. Next gig is going to be in Dallas, Texas. 
at Hyenas Comedy Club. I'll be there June the 2nd and June the 3rd, Friday and Saturday. Two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. Hyenas Comedy Club in Dallas, Texas. And remember, we're not just a live show on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Twitch. We're also a regular old podcast, just for your ear holes. You know what I'm saying? Apple Podcast, Spotify, Pandora, iHeart, Google, Stitcher, you name it. Wherever there's a podcast, we are also there. And it's fun just to listen to it sometimes as well. And we could use your love there. So if you could, subscribe or follow us there. That'd be great. And if you want to help us out, you can join our support page. Like I said earlier, countryish.com. Click on support. You can join at many different levels. Rhinestone level, five bucks. Pewter Pro, 25 bucks. Executive Zirconia, 50 bucks. Plaid to Nimalate, 100 bucks, and it gets you right here on the show. We'll talk to you. We'll, we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Maybe you have a, a small business you want to talk about. Well, come on, give me 100 bucks, we'll do it. But if you got no money and you want to help us out, you can give us five stars at Apple Podcast. Write a nice review, and I'll have my intern, Isaiah, read it. He will read your words. Whatever you write, he will say it out loud. And I think we have a new one, yes? Yes, sir. All we right. have a five-star review from MJ the True Goat. Okay. I bet you that stands for Michael Jordan. I would think so. Okay. And he is the True Goat because LeBron James got swept in four. That's right. So. That's right. Hang on. Never a question. <laughs> And this guy is not a fan of Intern Isaiah. Oh, no. You should get rid of Intern Isaiah. Just oh, started. yeah. Li- <laughs> well, I'd never do that. Go Just ahead, started buddy. listening to the podcast. Everybody is quick-witted and charming except for Intern Isaiah. Hmm. Ever since he started doing the small town news, the segment has gone downhill. I think John should do it again. Mm. His accent is annoying, and he kind of sounds like a girl. What? I think I know who that is. Who wrote it? Yeah. Well, hang on. Let him finish. Sometimes I think he's on the spectrum, and I also (laughs) think that he secretly (laughs) has the hots for John and Mark. (laughs) Stamos, by the way. (laughs) I thought that before, too. Also, how much does that fat tub of lard weigh? Whoa, whoa. Hey, stop. Stop right there. I will not let you read... Mean words about my Hayseed Gen Z. That's my friend. Whoever wrote it, that's my friend you're talking about. And I will not stand for it. Did you say, oh, it goes on. No, no, no. Tubba Lord? I'm cutting it off right there. Yep, Tubba Lord. But, but they did give us five stars. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, we'll take uh, but they Quickly, just on. finish it. Okay. I bet he has trouble with the ladies if with looks like that. Hashtag fugly. <laughs> Not everybody can look as good as Stamos, Sebastian, and John Reed. Well, John okay. is the goat, and he doesn't need Isaiah dragging his show down. Oh, no. Anyway, I'm intern Isaiah, and in my free time, I watch horse porn and sniff granny panties. <laughs> horse porn and horse granny porn. panties. Who wrote that? MJ what? MJ the true goat. Now, what's your theory here? That's uh, Sebastian. You think Sebastian wrote that? I think that? that's Sebastian. I so think look, he did that. At home, if you're listening, watching this, and you're thinking, that, that was pretty mean. Um, yeah, it was. So let's not do that again. Uh, why don't you write something nice? Write something nice. Make Isaiah feel good and give us five stars. Yeah, and we'll read it. Let's write something positive. Yeah. All right, any comments <laughs> no, before funny. we wrap it up, boys? Anything? Last minute uh, thoughts? So S- Scott Reese, he, he threw in. He said, you should have, have you thought of an AI stand-up and have your voice even deep fake? Basically, you can sit back and let the AI do the job for you. This is a great question, and in fact, we are working on that. Um, I came in here, it seems like yesterday maybe, and recorded, I think Alan has uploaded my voice to AI, and we're going to have fun with that. Uh, Isaiah, have you done yours yet? No, sir. Okay. But that's in the works, Scott okay. Reese. So uh, good good call. All right. Um, Stamos, anything you want to say? I have nothing. I have zero. Uh, I'm going to go home Isaiah, and make dinner. Anything you want to say? Somebody says that the accent is incredible. Mary right. Baker said that. There you go. Who? Mary Baker. Mary her Baker. accent is similar, though. She's, yeah, she's up there. I like area. her accent, too. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the booth. Anything? Last-minute thoughts, questions, concerns in the booth? 
No, man. We're All right. Well, that's it for this week, everybody. I want to say thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And uh, go ahead and hit the share button. The show is over. Might as well, don't just throw us away. Pass it on. Hit that arrow button. Go ahead and hit share right now. And we'll see you right here next week. Till then, I'm John Reap saying, bicycle. Podcast, it'll make you giggle. It ain't number one, it's right in the middle. The town's not big, but it ain't too little. It's time for country. Hey everybody, it's me again. I just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. You know, we couldn't do this without supporters like you. Oh wait, are you not a supporter? Well, you could be. It's real simple. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on the word support. That will take you to our Patreon page. That's our support page. And from there, you can support us many different ways. There's uh, different levels. You got $5 and up. You got Pewter Pro, Rhinestone Level, Executive Zirconia, all the way up to Platinum Elite. And all of them come with different rewards. We're talking hats, T-shirts, ginger beard masks, even be a guest on the show. You got to check out our Patreon page. Go to countryishpodcast.com, click on support, and thank you. Thank you.